Paul and Courtney for just hosting all of this and uh, just serving their hearts. And it's just great to be with all of you. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. You know, there's, um, there's one thing that Paul prayed for in the disciples. And the answer is in verse 17. When I think of communion, it says, I keep asking... So just picture Paul here. He's praying for the disciples. He goes, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And it's incomparably great power for us who believe. You know, what's amazing about this is Paul is saying, I'm just praying that the disciples realize what they have. And this morning, what you've come to is not a place where you get something. It's not like the gym where you go to the gym. I don't know how this goes too much. <laughs> but I, you go to the gym, you get a good workout. And then you leave really fired up. Yeah. Now, church is not a place where you come and you get an inspirational message so that you just have an energetic week. Church is where you open your eyes. Realize what you have. Communion is a time not to get grace. Like, oh, now I just got to take the communion so that I could get forgiven. No, it's a time where you realize the riches of God's grace in your life. Wow. It's a time where you open your eyes to that great power that you have. Jesus didn't say Take this bread so you could have forgiveness of sins. He said, take this bread so you could remember me. Yeah. And why do we have communion? It's because we forget Jesus. Yeah. And we start becoming churchgoers or just people that forget about the cross. And if we go to Ephesians chapter 3, here's the solution to make sure we don't forget Jesus. Amen? Amen. In Ephesians 3, verse 12, in Him and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you not to be discouraged. This is awesome right here. He says, in Him and through faith in Him. So it's not just about being in Him. It's not just about coming to church. It's about having faith in Him. And when you have faith in Him, you can approach God with freedom and confidence. Isn't that awesome? Yes. We're going to have uh, fireworks here in a few weeks, right, for 4th of July. Yeah. We'll celebrate freedom, and it just feels great. But it says every day, not just on church, every day we could approach God with this freedom, wow. with this confidence. You know, in the Greek, the word freedom means boldness. And the word confidence means trusting and relying on. So there's one thing that when Jesus comes back, he's going to look for, and that's faith. It says in Luke 18, 8, will he find faith on earth? That means if Jesus was to come back today, if we just take communion and remember Jesus, remember our faith in him, we will be able to come with him every day with boldness. And you know who is able to come with people with great boldness? is kids. I mean, I remember as a young kid, I would go to my parents. I remember asking them, could I have a saxophone? I want to be a saxophone player. They took me to the store and bought me a saxophone. Wow. And then I gave up on it like a year later. And I said, I want to be a drummer. So they bought me a drum set. Wow. And I must have instilled that in my son because my son, one year old, he's, he wakes up asking for something. This morning he just grabbed Jerry, pulled his legs, and said, mm, I want some pancakes. I want some bacon. I want some toys. And we know that our parents want to give us what we desire. Yeah. But if we don't have that boldness with God to say, I know that you want to give me something, God. And the freedom to, to go and step before the throne of grace, it means that we've stopped coming to God with boldness and with confidence. And why does that happen? Well, my wife's going to share about that. So. Oh, hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. I can share about that part. Um, it stops us. Uh, but it feels so good to be with the family in Seattle. Um, it's an amazing one-year anniversary service. On. It's been such a joy uh, to be, build family with you guys and build family with Eugene. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. But I just want to share briefly, uh, definitely this week, uh, there are things that stop us from being able to have that confidence and have that freedom. And I know for me, two things that stopped me this week was 
Number one, as my sin was being exposed, was just being ashamed of my sin. And which led to me really starting to make things about myself again. And, um, you know, what, what exposed my sin was, you know, it's amazing, Caesar. Um, and I have a, a daughter, Natalie. You guys um, know Natalie. She's um, very, um, what's the word, happy and excited and very sociable. She's amazing. We get to have her two weeks out of the month, which is awesome. And now she's on summer break, so we get to have her for two months, which is going to be awesome. So pray for us. <laughs> um, and, you know, as, as amazing as she is, when she comes, uh, in the beginning, it could be hard for me because it exposes a lot of sin. And a lot of sin all at once in my heart that I don't normally see. And so it's something that I've had to learn to really be grateful for, to see my sin. But... Um, you know, when I get all my sin exposed all at once, something that, it just gets to be really hard to go to God. And that's what happened to me this week. Is it got really hard to go to God. It, it got really hard to um, be transparent with my sin and open. Um, and I started to, like, convince myself in some way that before I had to go to God, I had to, like, get right first. Right. And it sounds really silly to say out loud, but it's almost like saying that I need to save myself. Yeah. Right, like I need to save myself first before I can I can go to God, um, and that's why you know I really appreciate these scriptures because it talks about how when we come to Jesus or when we come to God, we need to come in Jesus's name and um, to approach God in Jesus, and that's why uh, communion is such a special time um, because it's you know it's the time where we get to come to God. And because of the blood of Jesus, we get to we get to ask God, God, don't look at look at Jesus, don't look at my sin, you know. And and we get to have our sins just be totally washed free because of Jesus. Um, and you know, it was amazing to learn this this week. You know, what stopped me from approaching God, and and it led me to just have a really honest prayer with God, um, a really tear filled prayer with God. And it helped me really see that, you know, it's impossible to seek God's grace if I'm not willing to accept my own sin first. And that's the only time that we get to truly appreciate the grace of God is when we get to open up our eyes and see our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I love that with God, we get to approach Him with confidence, that we get to approach Him, you know, with freedom. Because, you know, as we go to God in our sin... Um, we get to go to him in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the amazing part, is that God looks at Jesus, and he doesn't look at your sin. Mm. And that's where we can have confidence and freedom. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. Oh. You know, when I think of communion, I think of uh, the freedom that we get to have every day in our prayers. And it says, through faith in him, we're able to approach this. And so when I think of communion, I think of where's my faith at in the morning when I go and approach God with freedom, with confidence. There was a brother, uh, I want to share a story. There was a brother, uh, a few months ago, he, uh, he he went to sleep at night before he became a disciple. And he, he approached God for the first time and he said, with freedom. He just said, I'm just going to be honest with God. He said, God, I don't like where you have me at in life. He just said he felt scared that he felt like God was going to strike him or something. He's like, you know, I just feel like every day is the same. He's like, maybe I'm being ungrateful, but I feel like my life is just, every day is the same. I just have a routine. He's like, I'm tired of it being this way. The next day, he meets Manny on campus, and he starts studying the Bible, and then he got baptized. Wow. But then after he got baptized, his mom started persecuting him. And said, what are you doing? You're not going to the same church. And so... He says, Mom, I need to. I know that God's calling me. There's something you do when you do it for God, it changes how you do it. You know, maybe you're here for church because someone made you come, but it just totally changes when you know God's called you to be here. And you're grateful because of the blood of Jesus that allows you to be confident. So Devontae says, no, Mom, I'm going to go to church. So she says, fine, I'll go with you. <laughs> she comes to church and Gidget meets her. And this is about two months ago, and Gidget says, she came up to me, she goes, Caesar, I have a prayer, secret prayer, that she's going to get baptized on Woman's Day. Wow. So then she starts studying the Bible, takes a little longer to get baptized, but at Woman's Day, Devontae's mom got baptized. Wow. But then, because she had the grace of God poured on her, she goes, I, I need to be faithful here. So she had a secret prayer. I want to baptize my husband in 50 days. Wow. And 
And one day, Devante's dad goes inside his room and he sees him praying. And when you are in touch with the faith of Jesus Christ, and when you are grateful for what he did for you, you're going to be praying with freedom and confidence. Not these prayers that are like, okay, God, please bless me today. Please help me to have a great day. And God's just like, I want to do greater things. I mean, you just heard about the great power that you have. The same one that rose Jesus from the dead. So Devante's praying with freedom, with confidence. And his dad goes into the room and says, son, what are you doing? <laughs> said, I'm praying, dad. He goes, and you really believe God listens to you? He goes, absolutely. He says, well, how do you really know? He says, well, dad, join me in prayer. So he says, okay. He sits down, he starts praying, and then he gets moved, he starts studying the Bible, and just two weeks ago, Devante's dad was baptized in Christ. of God to work through me, but that's got to be getting excited to go to God. And that's what communion is all about. Because of the blood of Jesus, I can go to God with freedom, with boldness, and with great confidence. And let's hold hands as family and go to God this morning. Father, uh, thank you so much for the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice on the cross that uh, wasn't a loss or a defeat, but it was a victory because we're able to now to be victorious through death. We're able to be victorious through this life. And I pray that we all this morning could realize the power that we have, the, the, the grace that you've given to us, that we could realize the, the fact that uh, where you have us is a beautiful place. And where you have us in life, where you have us in our situations, you have us here so that we could approach you through faith and with great confidence and with boldness that you do listen to us and that you want to give us more than what we ask, more than what we could imagine. Father, thank you so much for the church that we have here in Seattle. We know it's the hope for this lost city. And I just pray that we could be in Jesus so that we could bear much fruit. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.